Well, I, I deliberately write a book theoretically aimed at adults and then one theoretically aimed, aimed at young adults, one after the other. But I've always felt that I write the kind of books that the adult ones could be read by young people and the young people's ones could be read by adults. Uh, I don't, um, I'm never really sure who's going to read them at all. I, I don't try, to, with the young people's books, I don't try to write down. I don't make the, the language simpler in any way. I don't make the themes softer. Uh, I try to write as serious books as, as the adult ones are. Uh, I mean, I, I just try to write the best story I can each time. And I don't think a writer can really write with a particular audience in mind. If you do, it's, it's, it's kind of a cynical exercise in a way. I think it would damage the book. So the only person I'm thinking about is myself. Is this the story I want to tell? Is it progressing the way I want it to progress? Am I exploring the themes that I set out to explore? Um, and that's what I want to feel as I, as I move through the drafts. For, for me, the thing that draws me to writing for younger readers is actually writing about younger characters. I've always liked books, whether they be children's books or adult books, that have a child at the center of them. That always has interested me. And when I write my children's books, I can put a child, all, all of my children's books so far have had an eight or nine year old boy at the center of them, which is a wonderful age to write about. There's an innocence there, um, a wonder about the world, a curiosity, a natural curiosity. And I, I just enjoy writing about that age group. But that la naturally leads me to an audience of generally that age group in those books. So, you know, I, I'm, again, like writing about history. When I started writing first, when I started writing novels, I never expected I was going to write for young people at any point. Hadn't crossed my mind at all. Uh, but then once I did with Boy in the Striped Pajamas and then with Noah and Barnaby and I have a new one coming, um, it's, it's become part of me that I, I wouldn't sacrifice it. You know, people often ask me, which do you enjoy writing more, the adult books or the children's books? And I don't enjoy writing either one more. I, I love the process of writing a novel. The terms are really publishing terms and they're bookshop terms. You know, when, when you go back, say, to something like Treasure Island, um, Robert Louis Stevenson wasn't writing that thinking, I'm writing a children's book or I'm writing an adult book. It's just a book. Uh, I, I don't think of, you know, I, I partly think of them as adult books and children's books just by where I'm going to publish them with which, which publishing has. But they're just books at the end. You know, they're all part of the same body of work. They're all novels. And um, I don't want to exclude readers from any of them. If a, ch a child wants to read my adult books or if an adult wants to read my young people's books, um, they're very welcome to. I think I've, I, I've been sort of surprised by the fact that I've written so many novels set in the past. And I don't really consider myself a historical novelist. I consider myself a novelist who has written books which are set in different historical periods. I mean, there's a lot of story there in different places. And the best writing from the past also encompasses themes from the present. Certainly in each book I've, I've, I've written, I've tried to do that. The Absolutist, which of course is a First World War novel about conscientious objectors, I think has a, a lot of resonance with uh, with war today, with, with people who are effectively conscientiously objecting to war today and attitudes to that um, around the world, particularly in this country, I'd say, um, of America. Um, so, you know, you're not just, just because something is said in the past does not mean that that's, that's where it's f so firmly rooted. The first responsibility of the novelist when they're writing about history is, is not to the history itself. It's to the story you're telling. It's to the characters you're creating. You're not writing a work of nonfiction. You make, you make deliberate decisions about what you're going to be accurate with and what you're going to not be accurate about. It's like what Joyce said about grammar, that once you know the rules of grammar, you're allowed to break it. If I know as much as I can know about the Russian Revolution, say, then I can decide what's important to tell and what's not important. Um, I, I always find it irritating, say, when, when um, you, know, you get a letter in the post saying, you know, I read your novel um, and here's all the mistakes in it. Well, there are no mistakes in fiction. There are none. Uh, you know, it's, it, it can be well written, it can be badly written, but it's not there's no mistakes in it. The story is the story that I, that I or the, our novelist wanted to, wanted to write. So I try to know as much as I possibly can before starting. I, I do a lot of research. I instinctively know when to stop researching and when to start writing. Uh, but, um, but I'm always thinking of the story first more than anything else. Is this, is this going to make the story interesting? Is this going to be truthful? Are these, is this going to make the characters, is it going to bring them to life? I think the w there was a generation of Irish writers um, coming to uh, the fore around the sort of mid-90s, um, early, er, no, sort of earlier than that even, like from the start of the 90s, uh, right through. People like Roddy Doyle, uh, Colin Sabine, Colin McCann, Anne Enright, who were writing extraordinary novels. They were being published around the world. 
they were very successful, being made into movies, winning awards. And for young people in Ireland who, who wanted to be writers, there was a feeling that it was possible to do that. And in terms of the, 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 the Celtic Tiger and the boom and what has become the crash, that's what everybody's writing about now. I mean, I have a lot of friends in Ireland, a lot of writer friends, who are all working on their um, the crash of the of the boom novel. And there's going to be a lot of those novels coming out over the next couple of years. They've already started. Claire Kilroy wrote a wonderful novel called The Devil I Know. Um, Donal Ryan um, has a fantastic novel called The Spinning Heart. And there's at least half a dozen more, I'm sure, on publisher schedules for the next two or three years. So it's going to be interesting to see how they all approach it. Uh, it's not a subject I have any interest in touching at all. It's not, that's, not my, that's not where my talents lie. Um, and it is where their talents lie. So I'm letting them get on with that. I feel, I feel it's, a, it's a little annoying at times when people always assume that because you come from a small country, you should just write about that country, that that's the only thing that interests you. Um, it, it isn't. My interests lie further afield. And I'm, I'm, I'm out of Ireland a lot. You know, I, there's a lot of stories I want to tell from around the world. Um, there's, enough, there's, there's, there's so many good novels coming out of Ireland about Ireland that that's... I just, I just have found that there hasn't been a particular story I want to tell. If I found one that I wanted to tell, I would tell it. Um, but I'm not going to feel any pressure necessarily to do that. Uh, other nationalities you know, in Britain and America, as I mentioned earlier at the talk here, uh, they, those novelists tend to have the freedom to write about anywhere without anybody asking them any questions about that. But smaller countries, it just seems to be people are obsessed with the idea that you should just write about yourself.